have a dream, and that dream is to build the biggest of every single type of beacon in hardcore Minecraft. Oh, I'm sorry, you thought I meant this kind of big? <laughs> no, 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 little one, I mean that kind of big. But to do it, I'm gonna need literal millions of each of these resources, and since that's gonna take thousands of hours to do, we're gonna start with just the iron beacon, at least for this video. But if we're gonna build a beacon that's 300 blocks tall, the first thing we need to do is find a place to put the thing, which, uh, probably isn't gonna be here. So, step one, find a location. You know, this ocean might actually be perfect. Ooh, it's a puffer fish. I've never seen. But did, did it just disappear? Aw, could have been a pet puffy. All right, for each of the beacons we make, I want to have them as actual useful structures, not just an overly excessive piece of art, like myself. And because we're gonna need like a bajillion iron for this project, why don't we just make the beacon into an iron farm, but a massive iron farm. Then make an even bigger beacon to go around the farm and put all that on top of a massive iron golem. And then put that in the middle of the ocean, have it rising up over the water like a giant atlas statue of pure iron, just like that. Okay, maybe more like this handsome devil. All right, so this is the iron golem we're working with. So now we just gotta put a big old beacon on top of that. But first, we need to go get more cobblestone and repair our stuff. <gasps> oh no, my children! I had two here. What happened to your brother? Oh, he's trying to escape. Huh. Well, anyway. Now we gotta figure out how to put a beacon on this guy. Taking inspiration from a normal beacon, we're gonna replicate this, but at a 1 to 32 scale. So for each iron block here, we're gonna build a 32 by 32 iron block on top of the golem. But to get a general idea of how big that will be, first we're gonna outline it. And now we need more cobble. Five shulker boxes later, and we finish the bottom row outline of this beacon. This thing is gonna be huge. So we finished the second layer, and we've run out of cobble. Again. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. That is a chunky boy. If we can get Jerry over here out of this hole, we can compare him to the actual build. I think it does look like an iron golem. I was a little bit worried about it before, but I think it looks good now. Now that the outline's done, we need to figure out how many iron blocks we need to fill it all in. So, um, let me get my glasses on here. All right, time to do some math. The pyramid is made up of a 32 by 32 by 32 size block, meaning that each individual face is 1,024 iron blocks. And since each block is made up of nine ingots, that means we need 9,216 iron ingots just to do this. And we want to do that. So, now we just gotta multiply that by the surface area of a Accommodating for the spatial intersects and account for the omission of the algebraic segment where the beacon goes. Calculate the dimensions goes. of the golem and... How? Oh. Hmm. Three point one million iron ingots. How much do we have right now? Ah, not a lot. Let's see if care iron farm a bit. Now, let's see how much this gets us. Ah, but not, not much farther. <laughs> we still need like the 3 million iron ingots. But that's not even the biggest issue we have right now. Because just to store that much iron, we need nearly 2,000 shulker boxes. Which I don't have. So either I can spend the next four months of my life killing shulkers in the end. Help. Help. Hell, babe. Or we could just make a shulker farm. That sounds like a better idea. But if we're gonna make an automatic shulker farm, we're gonna need to get the supplies for it. Which means gathering sand, obsidian, and cobblestone. And then building a giant auto smelter to turn it into glass and smooth stone. Don't ask what happened to my old smelter. I don't wanna talk about it. Then just grab a few more random materials and we're finally ready to get infinite shulkers. Now, to get these shulker cells, we just need to build a nice, simple little farm based on the known principle of a hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis induced automutilation resulting in a spontaneous quantum teleportation cloning hybrid event forcibly directed through a multidimensional stable wormhole into a predetermined harvesting facility utilizing an undetermined but theoretical epsilon delta zero Kelvin defined substance for primary resource extraction. Simple. But before we build a farm that spits in the face of the Geneva Convention, I need to find a way to feed the homeless man living in my basement. What? 
That's why this video is sponsored by Honkai Impact 3rd. Honkai Impact 3rd is a next-gen 3D game with surreal scenery and stories where you can lead your captain and the waifu to fight for your desires in the world. If your desires are playing on mobile, Steam, PC, Epic, and venturing through a unique story, that is. Depending on your style of play, Honkai Impact 3rd has mini-games, full-scale expansions, and a massive open world to explore. January 18th marks their new update as well, version 7.2, The Wings of Mars. Now, if Wings on freaking Mars wasn't enough, 7.2 is the final patch of part 1. Not only are there new battle suits, the strongest of them being Fuha, which feature authentic martial arts, but there's also a preview for part 2's story. And new players only will be able to get the Hersher of Finality and the Hersher of Rebirth, who are the most powerful characters in the game. If you download Honkai Impact 3rd now and use the code on screen, you'll get tons of rewards and new players will get even more bonuses in the game. You'll receive 30 crystals. 2,888 Asterite, and an SSS trial card option. Download the game using my link in the description today. <laughs> Please, G-Squad is getting rowdy and I haven't fed him in months. So first we need to build a chamber to hold the Shulker and to eternally torment him into shooting himself in the face. <clears throat> so the Shulker will go here, with this rail line to move him into position. And over here we can make a little chamber for the army of snow golems to harass the Shulker from. Whenever there's a Shulker here, the golems will see him and begin bullying him. That will cause the Shulker to try and fight back. But because of how tight this area is, it will always end up hitting himself. Now, something special about Shulkers is when they get hit with their own attacks, there's a chance that they'll duplicate and teleport to a new location, leaving a new Shulker where they were before. Man, these guys are savage. It's like, here you go, friend. <laughs> Come to the death spot. I'll leave. Now we just need to make sure that the place they teleport to is in the nether. And to do that, we're going to surround them using giant nether portals and a bunch of glass. Now, we're covering this all with buttons so the shulker has nowhere to go but to teleport to the glass on the inside where it'll instantly get moved to the nether. But since half this farm is going to be in the nether, we'll have to make sure that both dimensions are constantly loaded. So we're going to make a little chunk loader down here and another one on top of the nether route. And now the farm can run no matter what world I'm in. Once these shulkers arrive in the nether, we're going to need to get them to some sort of killing chamber. First, we're going to build this small platform down here for them to jump on after coming through the portal. And then we can build a rail line to pick them up and drop them inside some powdered snow, where they'll slowly freeze to death. Don't ask me why snow doesn't melt in the nether. However, there is one major issue with this farm. When the shulker in the overworld shoots itself, there's only a chance it'll duplicate, which means it could end up killing itself and therefore rendering the entire farm useless. So to fix that, we're going to build a backup system. First, we'll build a chamber up here to hold some reserve shulkers that come through the portal. And then on the overworld side, we'll build a little system here to drop them off into the torment hole. This way, if the shulker ever dies, the snowman will stop shooting and therefore no longer hit the target block. That will send a signal all the way up and request the new shulker. So now that it's built, we're going to build a quick collection system that'll put all the items into a shulker. A little bit ironic there. With the farm complete, there's only one teensy thing missing. We need to kidnap a shulker, which will require moving it thousands of blocks and through multiple dimensions. All while it tries to kill itself and me. This is going to be painful. Let's set up the tracks from where he's actually going to spawn. All right, this is where the fun part comes in. Oh, nice, it worked. Okay. All right, this should be enough to push him, I hope. Let's just run along with him and make sure he keeps going here. All right, moment of truth. Come on, please work. Oh, I, dang it. I missed the moment. Did it work? It did not work. I believe he needs to be out of the boat. Let's go. I did not think that was going to work. Uh, we need him to... No! Bert! Get out of the boat! No! Get in the minecart! Wait, let me light up the rail. Maybe that'll help. There we go. Okay. No, I didn't want it to do that. <laughs> he just left. Uh... Get in the minecart! Let's go! Let's get go! I'm not celebrating yet, boys. Oh. Now he's down there. He damaged himself, and he teleported out. Get out of here, shulkers. Here we go. Let's do this first, and we're off. Oh, this is nice. Here we go. This one has to work. Oh, stop hitting yourself. No, he pushed me into the portal! Okay. Did he go through? <gasps> I see it. Finally. That took four hours. Oh my goodness. Every mob is like checking it out. It's like, what is this thing? 
No! Oh great, there's three now. I swear, this has to work. All right, so this is the point when we need to actually build the rails to our shulker farm. Oh, don't kill yourself now, buddy. He's arriving. All right, now that we have him near the farm, we need to get him into the farm. So he's over here. We got to get him through here. Oh, okay. I've immediately been shot. The easiest way to get him through is going to be using rails. Then when he's in the overworld, we can send him into his new home to be eternally tortured. But that's going to require a lot of building and rails. So. So we give that a push. There he goes. All right, here comes the moment of truth. Which side did he go out on? Wait, what? He came back. Gary, what, why does nothing in my life ever work? Okay, attempt number two. Did he go through? Okay, we have no idea where he is. After mildly struggling, I had a new idea. Okay. Oh no! No, Gary! Oh, thank God. Let's be careful. Okay, did he make it? Hey! Are you actually kidding me? All right, so this means we're gonna have to go back to the end and get another one. Chad seems to think there's another shulker in here, but there's no way that's possible. Oh, I do hear him. Where? He's gotta be under us. If we enable subtitles, we can see... Yo! There's another one? Gary had a child! Okay, this is a no... Ooh! Wait, one of them's here. Give him a little push. <gasps> it worked. Get me out of there. It worked. I am a freaking genius. Okay, Terrence... This is your time to shine, my boy. Come on, we're so close. <laughs> Roll, Terrence. Roll. <laughs> oh, Terrence, you did it. That was so painful. That was at least 14 hours. Now, the nice thing about this farm is that I can run AFK. So while that thing fills up, we need to move on to our next big project, building a farm that'll produce over 3 million iron ingots. And step one is gonna be getting almost 500 villagers. But first, we need a place to put them. The design of this farm is pretty simple. Two villagers will farm up here. Seeing there's an empty bed, they'll breed. The child, filled with curiosity, will fall through this one tall gap and he'll be brought to a cobblestone cube where he'll grow up and be used to summon golems later while they'll be endlessly harvested for iron. Ethical. Now, to begin the incest, we're gonna need to locate a few willing subjects to birth this new colony. Alright, where are the local civilians? There's one. Alright, now we just need a method to get them from their old home to their new home. So now we have to take a man and potentially his wife or or a friend and and bring them onto that roller coaster into the sky where they will go into their forever home, breed and create 400 children for me. <laughs> the nitwit is trying to come with us. No. You know what? Fine. I spared him. No! You can't come. This will be the slowest trek ever. This should light up both. No. No. Go. go no. Oh no. I'm missing out. Wait for me. No, I'm going back again. Oh no, he's coming back down. Huh. What do you mean, huh? What did you just do? My, oh, okay, fine. Let's go together. Yeah, let's go. Here he comes. Don't worry, he's coming. Your husband, oh, oh you're still in the minecart. They'd like to sleep. Uh oh, no. No, oh no. No, no, don't walk. Bruh. Now, we'll AFK later by that to breed all the villagers. But before we do that, we're gonna collect all the supplies required to build the iron farm we're making inside of the beacon. And the hardest resource on that list is gonna be over 10,000 obsidian. So, this is fun. Having a good time. <sighs> all right. 10 hours and 12,000 obsidian blocks later, and we have almost a quarter of the materials we need for this farm. Why did I think this was a good idea? Now that we have the couple of supplies that we needed, let's head back to the beacon site so we can start building this nice, simple farm. But first, let's check on our sacrifices. Ah, I see they're doing well. Hmm, I guess it does look a little cramped. So then I think the first thing we should do is provide them an even better home down here inside of the farm. But I'm not just building this out of charity. You see, when the villagers are trapped on this platform, I'm gonna have some zombies nearby to eternally torment them into consistently summoning golems. Ethical. Okay, so the beds are all set up as well as the chambers that will hold the zombies to spook the villagers. Now we just need to figure out a way to get the villagers from up there down to here. I think I've come up with a plan to do it semi-safely. But to do it, we're gonna need some dirt. 
Now we just do some of this and some of that. Should be about here-ish. All right, here's my idea. I'm gonna build a little platform down here, fill it with water, push some of the villagers down into it, then they'll get shoved to the edge where minecarts will collect them and send them wherever they need to go, at least in theory. Now we need to try it. Excuse me, who wants to go in the hole? Yeah, oh, no, go in the hole. All right, new rule, into the hole you go. The hole is the holy place. Yeah, there we go, one, two, and three. All right, that's enough. The hole is occupied, how do I get out? Then, all we do is boom, boom. There he goes. Okay, so if I do this. New strategy. <laughs> if I do this, there we go. I can't believe my idea worked. Anyway, now the next thing we need to do is load the zombie chamber. But how do I get a zombie? Attention, villagers. Um, I'm gonna have to sacrifice half of you to zombies. So we're also gonna need some name tags so they won't despawn. You know, we'll name the first zombie number one. And then we'll name the rest a simple and easy name to remember. Billy Bob Jerome Womp Zombie B. <laughs> number one. Oh, oh, the villagers are so scared. Oh, this is such a sad... So Why is he going for me and not them? Well, it's kind of cool. It's like a transformation progress. You know, that happened a lot quicker than I thought it was going to happen. Definitely going to be using a couple on the same people. So I'm not going to remember who's who. All right, so now we've ethically acquired some Billy Bob Jerome Wompy Zombie Bees. Um, we need to get them down there, which shouldn't be too hard. And right here. Okay. Holy crap, you move slowly. Wow. All right. Goodbye, Billy Bob Jerome Womp Zombie B. So he's all set in his new home. Okay, now we just gotta get one more of him and nine more villagers into the farm. Shouldn't be that hard now that we have a setup for it. No. What happened to you? Bro, you need to go in. How did. Uh, I know how you got out because I put a block there like an idiot. Oh, this is gonna be a long day, isn't it? I don't have water. I didn't put a block above this guy's head, so he's dead too. That's nice. I'm gonna have to lose this guy. And, oh, sorry. I am making progress. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Ha ha. No! It's fine. I didn't need him anyway. Okay, let's not have the same mistake happen twice. Okay, we finished the villager acquisition and the zombie torturers. All right, so now we gotta outline where the portals are gonna go. They're gonna take the iron golems into the nether and roast them there as these villagers spawn more because they're freaked out about that zombie. So it goes stone, obsidian. This should, if I did it right. Yeah, there we go. So that should spook the villagers occasionally into actually spawning the iron golem. Oh no! Okay, this is a minor, minor thing. Oh, I already got it. No, come this way. Oh, he's so close. Oh, and one health point left. All right, we're gonna send our last remaining zombie boy. Oh no, it's daytime! Oh no. Oh, I saved him! Oh my goodness, I did it again! So with that, the iron farm is basically complete except for the killing chamber. Except I have to build 40 more of these. Yeah. Epiphany sent down from heaven. Instead of doing this minecart system, I'm gonna design a dropper system to drop the villagers exactly into their new homes. This is gonna work way faster, I hope. Here they come. Boy boy. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, now it works. Now it works. Oh no. Dear God! Oh, mistakes were definitely made. Oh, now I'm stuck. Great. All right, and after only 40 short hours of building, the farm is finally complete. Now, let me show you how this thing works. With the villagers trapped in this little cage, they're at a perfect distance to see our good old friend, Billy Bob Jerome Womp Zombie B over there. Except they can't actually see him because for some reason, they're unable to see through perfectly clear glass. So that's why we have this lovely little timer at the bottom to pop up Billy Bob over there to terrify the villagers into believing their lives are in danger. And with this perfectly timed PTSD, the villager will summon an iron golem right up here in 
destroying this platform to help them. But because the nether portals are perfectly spaced out, the instant the golem spawns to save his fellow villagers, he'll immediately get transported into the nether. So now what we need to do is make our way over there to the realm of fire and find a way to ethically harvest the golems for resources. Now the best place to make the killing chamber is going to be on the nether roof. So first things first, we got to get up there. Now it's really important that we make the killing chamber exactly where it needs to be because if it's one block off, the portals won't link correctly and then we'll have iron golems all over our nether roof. But never fear, if there's one thing I'm known for, it's precision. Definitely didn't get G-Squad to figure this one out for me. <clears throat> Now that we have the perfect location, we just need to build a quick little killing chamber and collection system. So now when a golem comes through any one of these portals, they'll simply fall into the lava with the cobwebs there to make sure they have a slow and painful death. Then below, we just need to build a collection system, which I once again designed all by myself. Once the golem dies, his items will then fall down this hole and get pushed along the ice trail where it'll be picked up by hoppers. Then we just need to program the hoppers to properly sort out the iron from the poppies and distribute everything into shulker boxes below for easy storage. Alright, so now that the auto sorter is complete, we need to program each chest to accept only the loot that we want it to. To do that, we need to place a hopper here, and then here, and a redstone torch behind it. Then, starting with a middle hopper, we fill it with some blocks. Now, since the first item we want to keep is poppies, we go to the top one, place poppies in, fill it with a different type of filler block, put in two more, and then we wait. Now that it's almost emptied, we're just gonna throw a couple more in there, and it should stop right here. Perfect. Now, any items caught on the track above where these hoppers are, only red poppy should be inserted into this hopper. So now we just need to repeat the same process by putting a hopper here and then a hopper here. Alright, so we have the entire auto sorter programmed, and now it's time to actually start the machine. But before we do that, we need a chicken. First, we need to make a little platform so we can capture the chickens. Now we need to spawn them in here. Ow! Oh, I see. Oh, cool, I got two of them on that one. Now we have to make them into murderers. The purpose of the chickens is for them to sit right here in the nether portal so that any golems that come through will have nowhere to stand and immediately fall into the lava. Perfect. And now we need to bring these guys down here. Here we go. Right like this. All right, now the question is, uh, yeah, I probably need the second one. Get to position this carefully. Right, oh, right here. There we go. Now I need to get out of this without burning myself. Okay, we're good. And now that the farm is complete, it's time to not start it. You see, we need to store the 3 million iron ingots this farm is going to produce. And we still need to make the 2,000 or so shulker boxes. And since shulker boxes don't stack, this is going to be painful. And now that the farm is ready, all we need to do is start it and wait. For those of you who are wondering, this is what roughly 100 hours in game looks like. And now we get to see the fruits of our labors. Oh boy, that's a lot of iron. Now before you go thinking I'll be crafting all these ingots into blocks like an absolute peasant, let's prep all the materials to make that process go way quicker. All right, what do we need first? We need 470 glass. We don't need scaffolding, so we could get rid of that. We need a bunch of smooth stone. And now it's time to build the actual autocrafter. Unfortunately, we can't use the one from the new version of Minecraft, so we're gonna have to build our own. And there she is. I like to call it the Semi-Automatic Crafter Machine Shulker Box Grabber 4000. The principle is quite simple. We load the shulkers full of ingots into these chests where they're pushed through this fire, burning the shulker and revealing the items inside. Then they're pushed down to where I'm standing and all I have to do is spam craft throwing the items out onto this waterway where they're collected by a shulker system and when the shulker fills up, it'll break and load into this chest. But uh, this could still take a while. I've gone through four double chests now. I haven't eat filled one of those shulkers yet. I'm kind of concerned something's going on, but maybe it's just dividing it up nicely. Maybe after this, one of them will be filled. All right, and all that crafting has got us this. Oh, this is not nearly enough. I've been here for so long that a raid has spawned. Okay, so after all that, see how much we have here. So we nearly have two lines of shulkers of iron blocks. Now it's time to begin actually building. We're gonna craft build, craft build, and like come back and forth. Okay, we're ready. We have all these shulker boxes full of iron blocks and we finally get to start building this massive structure. All right, now it's time to go for a swim swim. All right, eight shulker boxes later and we've done that. <laughs> 
Oh, it looks like nothing. It's barely even above the water. Well, 1,992 more sugar boxes to go. that the torso is finite wow that looks interesting hmm still not really coming together yet maybe once we have the weird nose and everything hmm maybe then it'll look a little bit better Right, we have finished half of his arm, um, and we're out of iron. Well, technically we have 19 more, but yeah. We need to go get way more. Look at that big boy. We have to do the head. Let's get her to it, boys! It's the final few blocks. Eh, oh, don't fall off now. All right, let's get rid of this. Oh, gosh darn it. All right, boys. Big George, the golem, is completed. Now let's have a big reveal on what this chonky boy looks like. Uh -huh. Um, he's looking... Ha, huh. okay, wait a second. I want to compare him to a real golem. What? Something... Something is missing. All right. Hmm. Hey, come back here. Okay, what are we... Hmm. I feel like... Okay, I think the biggest thing that's lacking detail right now is his face. So, what is on your face, sir? All right, I think I have an idea of some of the blocks that we're going to need. Conveniently, there's a terracotta place right here. While I was live streaming, getting all the supplies we needed to decorate the golem, an unthinkable situation arose. Hmm. Ah, skills. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was too good at the game, and it had to stop me. You get a log back and instantly fall into lava. Oh. Oh no. Hmm. <laughs> oh no. The worst possible thing. Um... Oh, come on, really? Wait, 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 why did I just get a boating achievement? If it reset my achievements again, I swear. I've definitely made a flint and steel. Yeah, you've definitely made a stone pickaxe. Eh, maybe not necessarily. <laughs> not since the last reset. But like this, I just made... I definitely have lavas, buckets of lava. Uh, the video to show that you no one's gonna watch this part, and the same thing that happened the last time is gonna happen again! And this is why you get to see every hour of footage that it takes to film my videos on my VOD channel. Anyway. All right, so we got a bunch of different concrete, and now I'm going to try and copy this man's face on Big George over there. I'm gonna take a screenshot here. All right, I got the screenshot. Now let's try and replicate it. <laughs> this is gonna go well. All right, I think we're gonna start the nose around here, and then if we bring it up a little bit, just like a rectangle. Oh, bring this out to here. If we keep doing this staircase pattern, I think it'll, I think it'll work. All right, so maybe we start bringing it back in now. All right, let's look at George Jr.'s cousin and George over here and see if they look the same. Look at that nose. I think they look similar. Yeah, I think we might be missing a block there. Yeah, let's place a block there. Yeah, let's go. All right, big man, what left? What do we have left? Okay, we got this giant line across the top. Hey, stop walking away. Will you stand still for two seconds? Okay, and this is why we brought the brown terracotta. I'm gonna just decorate a little line over here like this. All right, what does that look like? Huh. It looks too skinny. The nose is too thick. Let's make it a little bit wider. All right, time to see our work of art. <laughs> It's, it's a little bit thick of a unibrow, but, but I think it does the golem justice. And now we gotta work on his eyes. It's like a quarter of his eye is red and three quarters is black. All right, the eyeballs are done. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Okay, 
That looks a lot more like an iron golem. Yeah, the face definitely helped. Hmm. I've been thinking about this since we started. I feel like we need to take some leaves and like decorate down the side. Which means we need to go and get some leaves. That's looking a lot more like an iron golem. I like it. Okay, now we gotta build that. Oh boy. Since this is only 40,000 blocks and this beacon is over 300,000, we're gonna need like, I don't even, I don't even wanna do the math. We're just gonna go get as many shell crystals as we can fit and go from there. All right, let's grab out all these shulkers of iron blocks and it's time to see how far this gets us. All right, let's take a look at this and see how it's coming. Huh. These look nothing alike. <sighs> let's let's play around a little bit with this box up here and see if we can make it look a little bit more like that beacon. All right, now before we fix this to make it look like an actual iron block, we forgot to do the floor. Um, so we should we should do do, do that first. Okay, that took way too long, but the floor is done. And with that out of the way, we have to go back to our problem that we had before. Designing some sort of block over here that resembles an iron block. Okay, so this is what it would normally look like if we just built a wall. We have to figure out a way to make it look more dynamic. Eh, that looks a bit too funky. <laughs> Maybe if we did something like... Like this, and we do this, but instead do something like this goes here. So this keeps going higher, and then this comes back. Ah, okay, wait, wait, I'm liking this. Okay, now we gotta figure out a way to take this design and like blow it up 50 times bigger, which I'm not really good at that, but let's give it a try. <gasps> okay, let's see how this is going before we build the entire thing and have to tear it down. Yeah. I mean, it looks better than it did before. Let's get it higher. Okay, so the wall is done. Okay, I like it. I wasn't sure what it looked like from a distance, but this copied all the way down and all the way up again. This is gonna show a lot more depth than if we just stacked the blocks upright. It will be a little bit more expensive, but we have unlimited iron, so we're fine. Okay, so now we just have to prepare to, um, to do uh, <laughs> this design everywhere. We're just gonna require millions and millions of blocks, some of which we have, some of which we'll need to keep making. But that being said, let's, uh, let's get it done, boys. Okay, so we've done the first layer. This thing is absolutely massive. I need to get a shot with like the golem looking at me. Yo, this thing's gonna be huge. My only problem, I'm having the same problem that I had with the golem. There's a lot of white going on. And it's hard to like, even though we've added these little indents here and there, and this little structure on the outside, it's still hard to like make it look like a complete build. So I was thinking we need something on top of this to color pop it somehow. Just so you can like more, more see the scale because when you fly up and look at this thing, it just looks one, it looks like one big white blob of blobbiness, right? We need something to show how big it is. I'm thinking we're gonna use either one of two blocks grass or red sand. Now it's important we keep this simple and doesn't like intrude too much on the beacon, just enough to give it some pop. All right, so I'm really hoping we're gonna keep this because that was a lot of effort to put down. But to make this go one step farther, I'm gonna place a grass block in the middle and let it spread. Now I was debating on using red sand, but I think I'm kind of sold on this. I definitely did not steal any inspiration from ancient Aztec uh, temples. <clears throat> uh, it was the original, original thought. Now, the downside to this is it's going to require tons more iron, but I mean, like, we have the fastest iron in the world. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. I need to cry when I craft more blocks. Um, okay, mob switch is not on. That is good to know. I definitely turned it on, but it has decided to turn off. Okay, everyone, calm yourself. Oh, there's like 50 billion of them down here. Okay, it's all okay. Everyone's gonna go sleepy, sleepy. You go sleepy, sleepy in the face. <laughs> Okay, that looks a lot better than it did before when all the green spreads will look even cooler. Oh, 
Oh, all right, with that, we have only one layer remaining. This thing is huge, but it's not even like we're close to finished. Even after we do the last layer, we still have to make the beacon on top, which is gonna require so many diamonds, but we're not gonna think about that right now. For now, we're gonna focus on finishing the final layer. We nearly finished the top layer, but I ran out of iron again. I'm so sick of crafting iron. I don't want to do it anymore. All right, and now that the beacon's done, there's just one thing left to do. All right, well, that looks a little dumb. I suppose for a massive size beacon, we need a, um, a massive size beacon to go on it. So let's figure out how to make one of those. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if we have any leftover obsidian. Now we just need the center of the beacon, which we can use some sea lanterns to get the glowy area, but the outside is a bit more tricky. We could maybe use blue concrete for it or blue terracotta if it goes that light. Or we cannot be absolute peasants and use the best block for this, which will be diamond blocks. You didn't seriously think I was going to use a garbage block for the biggest iron beacon, did you? Ah, we only have 23. And we need, like, 13,000. Well, now nah, I gotta back up all that big talk I just said. Now, thankfully, we actually have a mining board specifically designed for diamonds from when we had to collect every single armor trim in the game. But that doesn't mean this task is gonna be easy. Based on my calculations, even with this board, we're still looking at at least 16 hours of mining. But before we can even start, we need to organize and get our supplies ready to build the diamond bores. All right, and now that we've gathered all the supplies to make the diamond bore, we need to find a location for it. The ideal location is going to be somewhere not near any ocean, so we don't run into a lot of water caves. All right, I've been flying over this terrain for a while, and aside of this small lake, everything's been pretty non-oceany. So I'm thinking we're going to start the diamond bore somewhere back here, and then we should have plenty of distance to mine that way. Now, did I have to leave and come back to get all the resources that I forgot to take with me the first time? No, of course not. Ah, it was just some other things that I've decided to take with me. All right, we just finished mining out this giant area, and it's only for the machine that'll get us to the tunnel bore. You see, we have to mine out a giant section just to build the diamond bore, and this machine that we're about to build will help us do that. All right, with that, the first machine is done. This will mine in a straight line a whole long way that way, so we can then build this tunnel bore to actually get the diamonds. And all we need to do to start it is hit this, move back a little bit. This should catapult the TNT at the wall. And now we just gotta do that for like an hour or so. Should be fun. So, <laughs> I'm mining, right? And... I'm doing well, and I'm thinking, you know, this seems different than last time. You see, the last time I built this kind of tunnel bore, I used it to get every single armor trim in the game. And that required like 30,000 diamonds, and since this is only half of that, I thought this would be a lot easier. But as I'm mining, I'm, I'm noticing a difference, and I can't tell what it is. And then I realized, the last time I went mining, I was in deep slate. And I was sitting here confused, like, why is there no deep slate? Am I even deep enough for diamonds? And then I just put it together. I'm not supposed to be at Y level 50. I'm supposed to be at Y level negative 50. <laughs> <laughs> this is. <laughs> I'm. I, I. I'm going to bed. I'll deal with this tomorrow. All right, and just a couple hours later, we have the machine on the correct level, and now we can actually start clearing out the area for the diamond bore. All right, and now that we have the actual tunnel dug, we can begin building the diamond bore. <laughs> All right, with that, the machine is ready to use. All we need to do is hit this note block, cross our fingers that we didn't place any block wrong, and watch. Uh, it looks good. We just have to check the other side now. All right, nothing blew up. Now we just have to run it for like 16 hours or so. Should be fun. And 
now that we have all the diamonds, we can finally begin finishing the top of the beacon. Albeit, first we have to craft them into blocks. All right, looking at a normal beacon, we want to put the diamond blocks around the outside and then something lighter, a bit more white on the inside. All right, now that's looking a lot more like this beacon, except we're still having... I can't figure out what to do about this light. You see how it starts white in the middle and then changes color as it goes out? Right now, ours is just white, and I can't figure out how to copy that. Now, I did assume this issue was gonna happen, and so when we were in the mines, I did pick up some glow light and hoping that maybe I could use it to fade out the color, but I'm not 100% sure that's gonna work, but we can give it a try. You know, I'm looking at it more, and it looks like an Italian man's chest hair. Not that I know what that looks like, but um, I think we should take this down. Yeah, that looks good again. I think that's all we can really do. We just need to surround it in glass and we're done. All right, with that, the beacon is complete. Except for one thing, we're still missing the beam that comes up from the beacon. And to make that, we're gonna use 64 real beacons. Except there's kind of an issue. It requires 64 nether stars, which means we gotta kill 64 withers and thousands of wither skeletons get the skulls to make those withers. Except, we actually have some nether stars left over from when we became immortal and fought a hundred brothers at once. So thankfully, where are they? We can just use those. All right, and now we can build the beacon inside of the beacon and inside of the beacon. Ow. With the beacon rays finally shooting up to the skies, I wanted to add a few more details to the structure. Taking inspiration from an ancient Aztec temple, I added giant staircases to each of the four sides. Now, in ancient Aztec times, they would perform a sacrifice atop their temples, letting the blood run down the stairs. But I didn't have any sacrifices, so I just decided to let water run down instead. I know it's not as cool. From there, I spruced up the interior gates by adding some depth to them and lighting portals inside connected to the iron farm in the nether. The only thing left to do from there was add a few trees to the greenery and bone meal of grass, and then I could finally call the beacon completed.